cities. You get treated to a two song intro for this. Say. 
you'll, you'll find out that we don't. <laughs> very soon. Very disappointing. Uh, who's first time? Well, so far so good. I did this. Uh, I was going to give a Latin lesson. Though, is there any Latin? Are there any Latin teachers here? Yeah, the Latin teacher section, I believe, is right over here. <laughs> I was in high school in Latin class when that year came out. And my uh, Latin teacher came and she was like apoplectic. Um, she'd seen Gladiator, and I guess. Apple what? <laughs> she was irate. She was beside herself with anger. And because I guess when Joaquin Phoenix does this number, and it's like thumbs up or thumbs down. In the movie, they did thumbs up to let him live, like, he's good. But actually, apparently, that meant unsheathed your sword and kill him. This meant sheathed your sword and let him live. So, you... Yep, that's... <laughs> that's your lesson for today. Gladiator is wrong. But he said, see, it's about the sword. So, the thumbs up is kind of ironical. It's like, hey, you're really saying, like, hey, I wish someone would kill you. <laughs> Hey, put the sword down. I think I got it. But just in case, tell the whole thing again because I wasn't listening. Uh, we, we are very excited to see you. Happy New Year and Happy Old Year. <laughs> two, two, that was. It's not a thing. <laughs> it could be our thing. the new black. <laughs> uh, before we just waste y'all's time getting Latin lessons, uh, let's start. I'm gonna go over here with my girl. Hi, I'm super nervous. My first time. You're doing well. Thank you. <laughs> so my question is for both of you, and I know Jensen has some experience with directing and all that. My question is, if you, either of you, got a chance to write an episode, what would it be about, and who would you kill off? <laughs> Remind me, I, I followed John Mayer on Twitter, and he retweeted a tweet that somebody had sent him, that was a question, and he was just like, laughing out loud, literally. And the tweet was, hey John, I'm a big fan, I have a question for you. What's your favorite song you've ever written, and why is it Slow Dancing in the Burning Room? <laughs> what would you say about, and who would you cast? <laughs> yeah, not who would you cast, or yeah, who would you... What's it about? Yeah, what's it about? What, you, what, what, what kind of character development would you... Uh, what would it be about? What would you, what would you write, and why did you kill somebody? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't written it yet. Um, I, for many reasons, I would not... Ooh. <laughs> I wouldn't kill anybody because I'm very, I know uh, the SBN family pretty dearly and I know how pissed off they get when people die, <laughs> even though it's supernatural when people die. Um, so I, I don't think I would kill anybody and it would not be, I think it would be about casting help because I would love to make sure this is done. Kind of <laughs> It'd be based on Castiel, and a lot of it would just involve him sitting in the rain thinking about stuff. <laughs> it's actually the only time in the history of my life that I would I would willingly go to work when I wasn't working. I would just go to watch him sitting in the rain. <laughs> Jensen? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that list of, uh, of episode ideas we took? Yeah! We did, yeah. I think, I think they were starred, the ones, most of the ones that we did. Um, but uh, there, was some, there was one in there, the, uh, uh, an old Civil War battle. Uh, that would be cool. He wrote that. What? It's what would you write? Right. I would write that one. He didn't write it. 
We just wrote the idea. Thanks for the idea, Crip. I'll take it from here. And I would kill off all of the ghosts. Because that's what we do. Thank you. Hi there. Welcome to the family. By the way, I just wanted to know when you guys were down here in Florida, did you go to like any entertainment park? Did you do anything fun? Like anything specific that like you enjoyed? Uh, no, we filmed late on Friday, so uh, it took us pretty much all day to get here Saturday or yesterday. We got we got in pretty late, so now we have. Do you like Florida so far? Love it. We, we... Yeah, I mean the inside of this hotel is great. <laughs> Lots of shaggy happy people, so there's that. We, uh, my brother-in-law got married in, uh, in April, right after we finished shooting season 12. So I went straight to uh, Fort Myers and Captiva. We were awesome. And we stayed, I guess there's like one place to stay in Cap it's like Captiva Hotel. Like it's a bunch, it's a big place. And the kids kept talking about alligators and crocodiles. And so, and so I think they mentioned like, yeah, Florida has a lot of alligators and crocodiles. And so every day they want to see the alligators and crocodiles. And it's like, well, I don't think they're really in here. And one day I'm jogging down the road and I see <laughs> not a joke. And I was like, ah, uh, somebody call the police. It's right there. We're not in the wild my park. Like, it was in front of the hotel. I have a question. Does Florida have both alligators and crocodiles? Just crocodiles. Just alligators. I just wanted to make sure I knew that. What is Crocodiles are in South Florida. So, it, so, so Florida does have both alligators and crocodiles. Is that not considered Florida? I mean, look, we got parts of Texas we don't claim, so. Uh, I get it. Fair enough. Anyways, I saw a No, that's not Florida. That's South Florida. I like that. Different state, different country. Size, they got crocodiles down there. No need. Like, no, no, not in Texas. We're not the Aggies in Texas. Just in College Station. <laughs> well, that's part of that. You're an Aggie. I just want to let you guys know that uh, throughout Supernatural when I was watching it, there was many extraordinary moments that were just parallel to my own life. And it was able to help me get through some pretty tough times, so I wanted to thank you guys for that. Thank you, Skyler. I, I, was, I was afraid to say, like, a Wendigo killed your friend or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my question for you guys is, um, were there any moments when you guys were acting as the characters through some intense scenes where it would carry over into your normal lives? Great question, Scott. Uh, there, were, there, there are certain times when, uh, when they yell cut no. that you're not necessarily able to just stop. Uh, especially if it's a big emotional scene. Because um, you're essentially tricking your body into, into reacting as though the emotions are real. Um, and so your body is reacting accordingly, and that's hard to turn off. Uh, uh, you know, you got really emotional about something. You know that even when you try to stop yourself from from getting there, it, it almost makes it come on even more. So <clears throat> that's um, those are sometimes hard to, to stop when they yell cut and maybe have to take a walk and shake it off, kind of a thing. Um, but uh, but as far as as far as the character bleeding over into our lives, we've been doing this for, for so long that, that we've got a pretty good uh, we've got pretty good at separating, you know, real from fiction. Um, that 
haven't been said, I mean, I, I feel like earlier in my, my, my private meet and I said something and I, I, I realized that when I, my first day of work this year, I, I, I think Supernatural started filming on the 4th or something, but we came back on the 7th or 8th or 9th. And the first day I got to work, it was kind of funny, but they call action and we'd say our lines, and I'd be like, I gotta do that again. Like, I don't remember how to act. And I, like, it felt so bad. Not that I ever knew. And let me just pay you. Don't, 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 don't. He has pockets in his shirt. <laughs> I set myself up with that one. I mean, <laughs> so, it was too easy for me. That, you know. Um, but, but, but it was a sign. It was the first time I, I realized, the first time in 13 season Supernatural that during a break, I was able to be Supernatural. Like, the first episode of the season <laughs> is always a little hairy because you've been off for three months. You're like, hey, where were we? We have to remember where we were in April when we were filming, and now it's July. Uh, but the, I, I guess I'm trying to be a little bit... It's not specifically, like, if I do an episode where I'm angry, I don't go home angry, but I'm still kind of in the mindset of, like, okay, I know this upcoming week, I have a stunt on Wednesday, so I need to make sure that I don't come back what I back, and I know I have this scene on Tuesday where I have a lot of dialogue that's not really uh, connected to the other characters, so I can memorize those lines, so they're in my head, so much stuff on Tuesday. Uh, Thursday, I have a late call, so that's the day I can take my dog to the bed. Like it's, so you're always thinking about it. It's, so, it's just, this week sucked. Like, it, it, this was a, we had a huge break, and this week was five full days. Oh. Like, you know, first shot of the day to last shot of the day, whatever, 13, 15 hours, whatever it was, nights, raining. It was just one of those crummy weeks. Um, and it's hard to, it's hard to, you can't go home and go, like, oh, I'm gonna play a video game, read a book. You're like, we're still on a kick on. What do I do tomorrow? I gotta get ahead of the eight ball, so um, I know what to do. So it, I think it stays with me and then I'm in work mode. It's almost like, and we've said this before, but it's almost like if you're a football player or a basketball player and it's halftime, you don't tweet, you know what I mean? You kind of stay in the corner and go, like, okay, what do I do? What do I need to do? How do I perfect? How do I get better? So I think it does affect me. And Jen every now and then, like, hey, it's all right. I don't like take a breath. I don't stress out and blow up. Kind of remind me to, to, to be more present sometimes. Poor girl. Yeah, thanks, man. Let me just paint you a picture real quick. Um, <laughs> the first day back this season. If you go back and watch the first episode, the, the first thing that we did day one back from our break was the driving sequence of us in the car having a conversation. We tried something that we've never done before. So for those of you who've heard me tell the story, bear with me. Um, it was, uh, it was a, a, a car, so I was free driving the Impala. Jared's in the front seat. And then there's another vehicle with a massive camera crane attached to its roof that is driving around us with the crane swinging in the arm and the camera. There's like technicians all inside the car. There's a focus puller, there's the crane operator, there's the camera operator, there's the DP, there's the driver. Um, the sound mixer, and we're on a very small two-lane highway. And I'm, I'm driving, trying to keep it at a consistent pace so that this camera car can roam around me and behind and, and move and drop To be more specific, we're not on any two-lane highway like I'm in middle of nowhere. We're on the old highway that went from Vancouver to Whistler that so they abandoned to, right. to build the new one because it was too dangerous, too many blind cars. <laughs> So to the right, the original was like that highway, just like cliff to death, and then to the left was a wall, like a mountain, basically, where the new highway Where they built is. the better highway for the Olympics. So there was no room for air, and the road is going like this and like this. Um, oh, yeah. So they locked it up. We have, we have people on this end. Uh, you know, it, we drove for, what, half a mile, a mile? We have people a mile down the road, cops. Stopping getting through traffic. Stopping traffic until we get safe and vice versa. Um, and sure enough, come around a blind corner. Here, here's a truck. Here's a pickup truck. Just some old truck that made it through the lockup. Directly at us in the same lane because we're now in this lane because the camera's filming my coverage or whatever it is. So, uh, so anyway, so I'm dealing with all of this and trying to act and, and remember my lines to do it. 
And poor Jared is just having a hard time remembering how to act. <laughs> Staring out the window going, oh. what was my line? I've got a camera five inches from my fender, and I'm trying to keep a, a container speed of like 25 miles an hour while I'm going up, like up and down hills, which is not easy. Never done this before either. First time in 13 years that we've ever worked with this stunt car. Genius over here, can't remember his lines. It's about, it didn't teach you that Latin class, did it? About, <laughs> it's about you know, it's hard to remember your lines when you're, when you're in sincere mortal fear. <laughs> yeah, I was too. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Thanks, man. Hi, how are you? Hi, um, I just want to say that I love you both very much, and I think, I believe I speak on behalf of everyone in this room that we're all thankful for everything that both of you have done for the Supernatural family. <laughs> so, my question is, is if you guys can tell a story of a prank that you guys have pulled behind the scenes. <laughs> There's some more coming down the pipe that we'll see. I think, I, I believe they called it uh, Hazy Part One. Right before the Alexander. So, Initiation Part One? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, there will be more parts. Um, it, it's more so specific, it's more spur of the moment. I, I laugh constantly because we have, like, this episode, we have a lot of. Uh, actors and actresses in it, and they're all very talented. And that's happened got a who's who of like fine actors that I think should work in the past, and fans of this and that, to come to me on the show. Uh, and it's, it's, it makes me laugh to see them watch us, and we're goofing around and this and that, they call action, and we break into character, and they're like, wait, wait, what, what, wait, we, we, we shoot, what, what? And we like, <laughs> sort of like a couple steps behind us, almost like I was the end of it. Uh, so off the top of my head, it's not going to think of any. It's more just, we have a good time. We, we, uh, the people who come on our show, which is wonderful, they're always like, hey, y'all have a great set. Like, this is a good place to be, fun place to work. Um, and I think we can try and keep it. Nothing malicious. Just sort of like moving around. <laughs> we, had a, we had a scene the other day with Misha, and, <laughs> and it, was, it was just three of us. And, uh... Awesome. That's awesome. Right. Right. Come on. You know what? You're awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you too, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Supernaturals. 
supernatural superheroes. <laughs> Supernatural super idiots.
there's a, the, my son always, there's a yogurt place in town near our apartment. And James took the kids to go to yogurt. And there's a picture on the wall that I took with the, uh, that's a year ago, two years ago or something. But there in the background of it, I take it with the, the young ladies and the It's on their wall. I don't know. And they walked in, and I, I didn't know it was on the wall. I wasn't even there. Jim was there with the kids. I was at work. And she's like, oh my god. And boys are asking why there's a picture of them at the wall at the yoga place. I didn't know that. I think it's like, it's so weird. It's still weird to them. It's weird. People say hi. I'm like, why are they so rarely talking to you? Like, it's going to be funny for a kid. Like, why do they want to take a picture of you yet? I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. Like, it's hard to explain. I don't know. If they really want to, then that's difficult. That's, what would you say? I probably uh, wouldn't necessarily push them or, or you know, encourage them for, for my, my behalf. It would have to be something that they would want to do. Uh, and then, you know, uh, and then, <laughs> sure, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll support that. But, yeah, it's not, um, it's a tough industry. It's, it's a really tough industry, and it's, um, and it, it, it gets, it's increasingly getting more and more uh, difficult. Uh, and so it's, uh, you know, again, not something that I would uh, jump at the opportunity to, to toss my kids into. But again, if they were passionate about it once they got older and they really wanted to do something and pursue a career in this field, then absolutely I, I would support them. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so my question is, how do you think the 17s have looked like if they died in the finale? And Jerry, by the way, we have the same bracelet. Alright. You said Venezuela? What? Venezuela? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've I often said that I think they should die in the finale. Yes. No! 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 no. Because if they're not dead, then they would be hunting. And yes. if you're hunting, I want to watch it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the show can't go forever. <laughs> it can. Yeah, it can. It has. <laughs> uh, I have, well, you have a lot of your work. You're right I've told some people that my, my dream about the ending of the show. Well, then I will tell you again. <laughs> I think at least one, I think at least one brother would have to die. And maybe, but I think that's the only, the only thing that could get the boys out of hunting, hunting, hunting caves. That wasn't a question, by the way. No, what's your head of life? If we, if we die in the finale. No, they're just asking what Sam or Dean's heaven would be like. What if Sam was a lawyer in heaven? Oh. <laughs> I check not. Uh, I think Sam would, I think, I think if, uh, legitimately, I think if Sam and Dean had to happen, they'd probably be doing exactly what they're doing now. Yes. You know, helping others. Hi for Dean. Sam, you want Dean's heaven would be. Uh, Hi. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm Caroline. I met you guys earlier. Um, it's my 16th birthday. So, um, I was up here yesterday and I asked Misha the same question. I was, gonna, I was wondering if you guys could sing happy birthday to me. Bring Gus on stage. Hey. 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 Hey.
<laughs> so you have to, you have to like rush in and start and be like, okay, we're all gonna sing. Uh, dude. <laughs>
you did something to me long, I've been a fan of Gilmore Girls, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
so yes, we will have him on the show. He's been on already. <laughs> <laughs> but aren't they all the same thing? Yeah. 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 Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity. Isn't the Holy Trinity? Holy Ghost. Aren't they all each other? Yes. Sort of. I'm confused. Depends on if you're in Northern Florida or
your mom's name? Lisa. Okay. So it's two different people. Sure is. Need me to write this down for you? <laughs> Got it. Uh, my question was, I just wanted to know what your favorite kind of pie is. Save the people that you love. So, I don't know if it's for you, though, so, yeah. 
Happy early birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Which name? Adrian. Oh, Adrian. Adrian. Like Adrian. Adrian. Anna. <laughs> Sorry, Jasmine here is a little slow. It's like Jim with the Nipper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you Sweet. when he said he hated Mary, how did it feel to get to that point? Was it like a sort of like cathartic but like relief for him? Like or has it been built so you could tell it's been building up for so many years. Um it was an interesting scene because it for me it answered a question that I had personally for a long time about storyline uh, and I kind of um, made an excuse for um, at the end of the previous season when Amara says I'm going to give you what you need the most and then mom comes back um, there, there we go. <laughs> which season it was <laughs> Season, it was the fifth in the previous season. <laughs> Turn it into you. They did. It was not this season. Wait, what season are you talking about? <laughs> what are these flamingos for? <laughs> what are we doing? What are their legs? Um, so I, I, you know, uh, I didn't really, it wasn't made clear to me why they, why Amara thought that this is what he needed the most. And I kind of just let that go and just thought, well, this is where they wanted to bring the story and they wanted to bring mom back and then they establish her and then, you know. Um, and, and until that scene, then it made sense that it wasn't, it wasn't mom coming back that he needed, it was admitting to himself and his mother that, that's, that he had those feelings. That's what he needed. He needed, he needed to basically get that out. Uh, so it took, it got really weighty when I kind of made that connection. I sat down and talked to uh, Bob Barrett's about it. He was like, he was like, absolutely. He was like, that's, that, that's the weight. That's where we need to go. And so, uh, and working that scene out with Samantha, uh, you know, she was, she was basically ignoring me. So I didn't have anybody else to like feed off of as far as energy goes, as far as emotion goes. So I just had to just dig deep and, and find it. Um, it's, I love Samantha dearly. I mean, she's just a, a beautiful person inside and out. And so for me to look at her with tears in my eyes and say, I hate you, was actually pretty difficult. <laughs> um, but again, I, you know, I think it was, it was just one of those really uh, uh, in-depth moments that we get to peel back a, another layer of character that we thought we knew so well that all of a sudden, now we realize that, that he had been harboring these feelings for so long and, and it, it needed to come out. So, um, yeah, that was, a, that was a tough scene to get through, but it was one that at the end of the day I was like, that really, that really felt like a good scene. I felt like some good work. So, I hope it, I hope it was.
Really? You get Richard's phone? <laughs> you get Richard's phone? What's wrong with you? It's about 13%, so good luck, Richard. the show, because we know I'll be rolling on the floor laughing so hard, especially with you, because I'm such a mean girl. Um, It's about 50 /50. Yeah, I think it's 50 /50. I think half the stuff that happens is funny. It, it, it comes from either place in the script, or I tend to think the funnier bits are not entirely scripted. Like we embellish something, or take something to the nth degree, like the being scared of a cat jumping up and down. <laughs> if you're a scene, you'll realize that, that, hey, this is an opportunity for something kind of funny. Uh, and then you'll do it, and you'll do it over and over again. So you kind of have the fresh part of it. I was saying about the meet earlier, the scene that we just shot, uh, about what if somebody stole your bottle. <laughs> so just a scene that we just shot this past week, where it's not scripted necessarily as a, as a joke, but we realized that it was a moment in which we could find comedy, and, and we had the saying on set, uh, no joke too cheap. <laughs> So if you see an opportunity to make something funnier or give it a, a, a comedian read, we, we try to do that. And then we can then take that and embellish on that. So yeah, I'd say, I mean, we've got some great writers and they, they throw some really uh, fun comedy stuff in there, but uh, uh, it's a nice collaboration between what we do and what they give us. Thank you, Ren.
the same time as my our horse stop. Thanks. Um, you too, I guess. <laughs>